Good morning, children. Welcome to the Early Morning Blunder Club. Well, it's not so early in the morning today. It's half eight, and uh, and I have had my breakfast. So, Gambush from Netherlands, rated 1553. Better watch out. Okay, I'm under 1550 now, due to my blunderous ways. Yes, and we got a Sicilian, so we're going for the Smith Murray Gambit. Okay, see what happens. I'm still just feeling my way. Feeling my way around the Smith Morigamba accepted. Happy happy days. Okay, so knight out you've got, I think you've got an option of knight or bishop. Um One of the issues here is sometimes it, you know if this pawn has moved, you, you might want to move your bishop out first. I'm gonna play knight out first. This is okay. On the previous move, it said this is a, an open Sicilian. Now it's gone back to saying it's a Smith Morrow accepted. Okay, e6. e6 makes sense. e5, I, I think, is a mistake. Um, and I can play bishop c4. I think that's what you're meant to play. Okay. This is probably signaling b5. If b5, I'm just going to drop my bishop straight back there. I'm going to play queen e2. Normal business in the Mora. Um, then castles and this this bishop very often were waiting, so I'm gonna make him orange because he's waiting. You can be problem with green is half the squares are green. So I don't know if the, maybe the highlight colours should kind of respond to the theme. Because what what's the point, chess.com, of giving people green squares? Look at that. Hard to tell. Just a thought, just planting seeds. Oh, you really want my bishop, do you? Well, so black's just... Okay, let's break this down. So she's just moved her, her knight to the edge of the board. I mean, my, my first... What went through my head is, okay, can't get there, can't get there, can't get there. Oh, am I going to lose my bishop? Well, no, I've got two more squares. So I think we can keep that knight there. But if I bishop here and knight here, I think just b3 and we'll just kick it out. See, she's moved also her, her only developed piece two times. And so she could have now have completed development, right? Because this is move nine. I'm two moves off, castles and develop bishop, which will take me to move 11. That's not bad. Eight is the quickest you can do. As I've said many, many times. So now I have a developed bishop. Okay, it's not as aggressive as it could be. And this pin. Not, not in the slightest worried. Right, if you want to give away a perfectly good developed bishop for a knight, which sometimes even sacrifices itself in the Smith Mora, so I understand, but I haven't really studied that line or that idea. And this knight is now, I mean, it can go here, get kicked away, can't go there, there it can get kicked again. I know. I don't know. <sighs> so I'm just trying to be relaxed and just quietly, calmly, evil as. Okay. Idea to develop the bishop. I mean, why not? The question is, do I need to develop it to d2 to in order if captures I recapture? Well, if she was going to if she was wanted to capture my knight, she could have had my knight by now. But is this actually a threat? Well, it does pin the knight on the queen. That's the point. And if f6, I think that's a concession. Or I could do this and then kick the bishop. Where's the bishop going to go? Well, he's only got two squares, isn't it? Hmm. But we do have a semi-open file. We do have a completely open file here. Maybe what I should be doing is, is 
group development rather than bishop development. I think that's right. I think in the absence of a really good natural place to put that bishop, don't move the stupid bishop. It's just like, chill, wait. This is something I'm really conscious about at the minute, learning. Okay, black castles. This is still an idea. This is still an idea, right? No one's taken those away from me. Um, kick at a bish is an idea. Takes, b takes. Then I've got two rather good bishops with full access to the side of the board where they want to be, which is like here, looking up at this side, you see. This is what we want. That's where you want your bishops. Um, this is almost like a tempo gaining move, but if takes, takes. Also, the knight's not even pinned. I mean, a knight could move. If it were better, you can't really go anywhere. If I hit the bishop and takes, pawn takes. I think white's better out of that. Right? They take, pawn takes. Yes, I've got an isolated pawn. Yes, I've got an isolated pawn. Uh, or it'd be on a3, wouldn't it? Yeah. But this extra space kind of helps me. I've got this line, potentially. There we go. There we go. And this, to me, I would call this a bishopy board. It's bishopy. So bishop friendly, put it that way. Because um, there are no locked pawns. No, no pawns are met by another pawn. So everything's mobile. Everything's kind of fluid. Okay, my, my hunch here is bishop b2. So clearly the, the pressing issue is the pawn is under attack. We might have knight here. There should be two, knight c4. What do we just, no, I can't really push it. I could put my bishop here, where it's not, it can't be annoyed by the knight. I think if you put your knight here, I'll just, I'll just move it back and say, now what? In really, I mean, she really should put a knight there because, there we go, let's put it back. I might even move this bishop to prevent the knight from going in there and attacked by bishop and queen. So he'd have to recapture with the pawn if I took. I wouldn't. I take, okay, this is a thought, um, I mean it's a discovered attack on the knight, but then I'm slightly concerned about f takes opening up this rook, when she does have a bishop at some point, which she's going to deploy probably on this diagonal. Um, and I'm slightly frustrated with the fact that I, I've allowed this knight onto an outpost in my half of the board. Maybe what I need to do is something like this. Rook up. Bishop here. Really put pressure on the knight. Yep. Yeah. Just remember, remembering to sanity check. I'm still a pawn down. By the way, check out Simon Williams' speedrun video from today. Might might have been yesterday. Uh, he plays the Jabava London and the most beautiful sacrifice idea. I won't say any more. Watch it for yourself. Beautiful. Okay, I'm thinking, I don't know, bishop here or here. So if I go here, it's still maybe in line with this. Got one attacker, she's got one attacker on there. I've got two defenders. Feel like my you see, she's got no reason to move these pawns at, at this point in time. 
Ah, okay. Ah, yeah. That's kind of dumb. But their pawn takes, and I actually win the pawn. So it's it's not it's not too bad actually. Actually, my bishop's just become powerfuler. And what did I just say? She's got no reason to move these pawns apart from to trap my rook. Okay, so you want to win the bishop, but I get it. I can defend with the knight. I might have to do that. Because the pawn behind it is completely undefended. Does block in my bishop. Uh, but, you know, my bishop has other, other options. So now I'm two pawns equivalent down. I'm, I'm basically an exchange down. I got the pawn back, but I'm down in exchange. However, I do have the bishop pair. Okay, the queen is not required for the defense of the bishop. Why? Because capture number one is the queen. Knight takes queen. I'm not unhappy. This, okay, she's got two attackers on here. No, she hasn't. What am I talking about? Knight defends this, but there's a bloody pawn in the way. Here. Knight goes there, it gets taken, loses its life. Knight goes there. Knight goes da 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 da. Oh, I'm not attacking the knight, to be fair. Um, I quite like this. I mean, it's looking at this pawn that's defended only by the queen. It's in line with the king. Is there anything wrong with that? Or is there something better? No. Got to be attacking. I'm inclined to push f3 and just secure this little pawn wall and really embarrass that bishop. So let's briefly... Oh, I had to overwhelm on that pawn. Paulson formation, apparently, this is. So I'm not a big believer in this pawn, I have to, have to say. Hmm. Having said that, my own position isn't altogether that clever, either. So the knight's defending... Oh, cracky. She's a, they're definitely a front foot player. I like it. Okay. All right, let's say, for sake of example, we'll start with pawn takes. Bishop takes is possible. We could trade off. Then I go, you know, we've simplified the game. We're one step, a couple of steps closer to the end game, and I'm down in exchange. But and no longer with the bishop pair if I go trading. I don't really want to go trading. Do I? Now, pawn takes here it doesn't bother me too much, actually. But the knight is the only defender of the bishop. The bishop is under attack. So do I just like drop back? If I take and bishop takes. Then I don't have the option of dropping back. If I drop all the way back now. We can trade off. Can't go there. Can't go there, there. So all of these are out. This is this is just silly. So we'll say that's out. So really I've got three options. Not pawn takes or drop the bishop back. And I think dropping the bishop back to a2 just makes sense to keep this file open, I don't know. So pawn takes, what if knight takes? See, again, she's got an outpost here. She's very conscious. Of, I'm just gonna stick the bishop there, I think. Pushes, we can trade off. Oh no, I can't. If pushes a trade, I get back ranked. So drop the bishop back. Pushes, I have to push back, making my bishop worse, don't I? Hmm. 
but then also the pawn is undefended. If I drop the bishop back, queen just takes pawn, yeah? If I take bishop takes, tradey, tradey, push, okay. No, there isn't a worry. Okay. I think we trade. Now I can push with tempo. Now the knight might come back to f4. Might get itself kicked. But then it might come here. And I have lost the bishop pair. I feel like I've um, lacked somewhat in aggression this game. I think it may be something like this. I stick my bishop there to defend the pawn, but then it's not really a good. I mean, I've, I've got very few pieces to, to play with to try and beat black. Yeah, this this is not a surprise, okay. So that's now, okay, this pawn is undefended. Let's be positive. I can kick the knight. The knight cannot trouble this knight. It's a very awkward space for knights to cross. I can kick. I really want to get my bishop on this diagonal. In fact, that might be the best idea, all, all in all. Now, if I come here and he, and he does that, or she, this pawn is then pinned actually because it, it's in the way of mate. But again, this, I mean, knight, she's very handy with her knights. I could just stick my bishop there, okay. Very much expecting 93. So you can probably tell what I'm really, really trying to do right now is to slow down the tempo of my play. Trying to be more thorough, trying to be more coordinated. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze, isn't it? <coughs> 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 Okay, so we've got um, f6. Interesting, so she's shored up her pawns and opened up the king somewhat, but with me only having the one bishop now, I can see the point in that move. I didn't consider that. I, I, was, I was convinced she was going to play knight d3, and that's a failing on my part. Bishop here just hits the rook and says, why don't you come and join the game? Um, rook c1 potential fork issues um, rook d1 avoids those issues and it's also defended by the queen so that's what we're talking about coordination right? loose pieces cost lives loose pieces lose pieces That's undefended though. That's defended by the knight, that's okay right now. Defends, 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 defends. And the queen can look after herself. There's nothing really in that. Okie koki. If I kick the knight, knight comes here. Bishop drops back. Or bishop comes here now, something like this. Um, I think it's time to kick the knight. The knight's annoying me. Get out of my space. I think you are going to come here. And I'm just going to go there. The knight's there even stops me, well, kind of stops me going there, but I could then reconnect my pawns. But that's not the way to win a game, is it? Gambush, you have got the better of me. Is 
there, I'll just do this. And then maybe come after the knight and annoy it. The pawn push doesn't work because queen takes. Or even knight here to hit the, sorry, queen there to uh, attack the knight. Maybe I need to go like think about an F4 pawn break just to break up these at some point. So if it just comes down to trading blows at the end of the game, me with three pawn islands, black with the extra rook compared to my dark squared bishop, which right now is very much hampered, your money's on black. Black's got to be like plus two and a half or something now. Also, this knight's kind of pinned because I don't really want to be trading rooks. Takes that pawn hangs because it would only be defended. Or it is only defended by by that pawn. So f four is definitely a thought. Okay, pinning the pawn. Okay, if my king moves, check there, check there doesn't work. Attacks the queen, that then becomes a threat. Again, because. What? Oh, man. That also attacks the queen, but then queen defends. I can't go there, 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 or there. So after this, the queen will have to come off this set of files, a uh, set of squares here. At which point I might have knight there. But she can go back to here to defend that pawn. I like this player though. She is a good player. She's beating me. So I'm happy now to see that I put that rook on a square where it was defended. Yeah, I'm happy that my knight is defended twice. This stuff doesn't hurt. I think your idea is this with check and then winning the bishop, isn't it? Um, if I allow that, this check. I think I've, I think I've just got to, you know. Oh no 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 no! There, I take the knight. I just saw I'm in a, in, walking into a royal fork, but, but hang on, no, there I have to take the knight, but then if queen takes, my bishop's safe. Oh, lordy. Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on as well. Hang, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. If that knight moves, I take rook, check. This is a fork on king and rook. Ha ha ha! Oh, excellent. If queen takes queen, family fork. Oh, that was good. That's, that's too good. I think I'm screwed. Family fork, check. I'm I'm two two pieces down now, equivalent of so. Is there anything in this? I take she just trades queens. No, I think I'm done. I'm just done in. Okay, resign. Well, very well played, mate. Very well played. Let's review, because I am a student. And right now, I'm a student of the smith Morrow Gambit. Did I bugger up the opening? Or was I just comprehensively outplayed by somebody playing 83 accuracy? With only one mistake. I did one blunder. 81 accuracy and playing like an 1800. Well, you know. I played like a 1600. 
right? I'm, I'm 1541 now. This is not bad. I'm not ashamed of that performance, you know? Anything like that, you, um, yeah, you take it, suck it up, take it on the chin. Bookity, 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 book. E6, book, book. Excellent move. Alternatively, there was castles, yeah. In fact, yeah, castles, castles ASAP, I think, in the Mora, is a general principle. Bishop D3. So I never really consider that because I know how important these C and D files are. I kind of auto played Bishop B3, but it's it's, it's kind of a trivial difference. Okay, good move. Yeah, yeah. We end up there anyway. That's yeah, not accurate. Castle is best. Excellent. Rook D1, and this is actually my best point in the game. This is when I'm plus one point nine. And then from this point, I proceed to eat my own ass. So, okay. The bishop kick was just pointless, and I missed the chance to punish them. Okay, I'll go retry. Is it develops? No, that apparently would be a blunder. Come on, what's the best move? E5, getting out the way of the of the bishop. Just constraining this. This is a backwards pawn as well. I already have a rook. That is not a kind of move that I would find comes naturally, put it that way. I'm also vacating the e4 square for my queen. Okay. So, we are students of chess, okay? We want to improve. What is it? Or what is missing in my thinking? That I didn't spot the criticality, if that's a word, of this pawn move, e4, e5. And at least sometimes I, I have the luxury of potentially being able to go back into the video recording and, and seeing what crossed my mind at this move. And to be honest, kicking that bishop, well, what's, the, what's the point in kicking the bishop? Bishop ain't doing anything. You know, I was, yeah, I was kind of saying I'm, I'm not scared of the bishop and you know, you can give me isolated pawns, I'm not even bothered. Is my face bothered? You know what I mean? But that wasn't that isn't what's critical here. I think that's that's the and you know, another thing that I've very much noticed about my own game is something that I really picked up from watching Naroditsky recently when like in his speedrun games, when he gets a really good position, so he's like plus two, plus three, something like that, and he knows he's got the upper hand over his opponent, right? that he doesn't rush and he absolutely doesn't come off the gas. What he does is he says, he says to himself, if my opponent's going to come back into this game, what's he got? I will, I must not, I will not let him back into this game. And there is definitely something missing in my, and I think I've said this before, but uh, I used to play badminton and I used to, one of the problems with my badminton game is that I loved playing badminton, right? More than winning a point, you know? So sometimes when there was like a, an obvious kind of pressuring shot, if not a smash or winning shot, you know, but the, the, the pressure shot to keep your opponent trapped, you know, get him right back into the corner, make him play, play an awkward backhand or whatever. Um, I very often didn't do that. I'd, I'd choose a game, I'd, sorry, I'd choose a shot that kept the game going, if you know what I mean. And I feel like I've, I'm lacking that, that, that bastard gene a bit in chess as well. 
So I need to, so I need to learn from Grandmaster Naroditsky that even, and, and I've been seeing this in my game, I get into a really good, I earn a really good position in the middle game and then I just kind of stop, stop pressuring, right? And then a really good thing, I really do recommend that you watch this Jabava game from uh, Simon Williams. Blitz Run 37, this is how you play the new Jabava London, okay? Right, now, this one, and in this video, he says, um, okay. you've got to play the most critical moves, the most kind of pressuring moves to make life hard for your opponent. Yeah, so definitely recommend that. So there's a couple of things there for me. Not coming off the gas, keeping the pressure down, but spotting where it's pressure. It's like at this point in the game, I thought like, I'm doing all right. And I stopped looking for the most <clears throat> moves. So I need to sort that out because I'm like, what's, the, there's these, um, you know, these diagrams where you've got like, eight points that, or whatever go out of it and then it goes neat 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 like like a kind of spiky thing and it shows you how strong you are in different areas or whatever that's i might there, there's definitely some areas where i'm stronger and definitely some areas where i'm weaker like everybody this is the point that improving your chess game is about spreading these things out uh, almost like all together you know know your strengths yes know your weaknesses just as much and work on them anyway so food for thought hmm but uh yeah jolly good game jolly good game Let me, what was my blunder as well I'm, I'm kind kind of interested to see that yeah okay i got my rook trapped and she spotted it so very, yeah very well done so here in this move best move was was it bishop b3 no, pushing the pawn forward. Huh. Come on, open things up for your bishops, hunty. I'm a pawn down at this point. I've got to open things up. And this just felt like a kind of an eat move. Anyway. <sighs> we live and learn. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. See you very soon.